So following on from Becky, I'll start out with another depressing slide about nutrition. So one apple today has about half of the nutritional value of what it would have had 50 years ago. What about citrus? Well, our grandparents would have had about eight times more nutrition from one orange than we get today. And over the last 50 years, we've seen progressive declines in the uh, nutritional value of our crops from protein, calcium, vitamins, minerals. And the same is true of our corn and other commodities that we're selling to our, uh, that we're using for our, animal, um, for our animal nutrition. So modern agriculture has got this massive drive on to increase yields, increase production, but the problem is that that comes at the, very often at the expense of quality. So we're losing quality. Think about this as well. Over the same period, the economics of our commodities has changed a lot. So we all think the corn price and the soy price is kind of low at the moment. Well, it's not really, because if you look at the price, the historical price over the last 10 years, we're actually, uh, there's a new norm. We're actually much higher than we used to be. So if you consider that the economics have changed, you consider that the nutritional value has changed, it's logical that we really need to reimagine how we grow our crops. We need to reimagine um, the, uh, the way in which we employ our inputs, what we invest in our crops, and how we measure those returns. And it starts with innovation. For us at Alltech Crop Science, you've just heard Becky talking about, uh, about algae, but for us at Alltech Crop Science, it starts with algae, it starts with bacteria, fungi, and that's the world we live in. That's where we innovate. So this picture up here is of our yeast uh, factory in Brazil. It's the biggest yeast factory in the world, and we produce some of our products there. It's relevant that I have a picture of a factory because it's very important that all of our products come out uh, consistently, replicable, every batch the same, so that we can actually do research on this stuff, so that we can guarantee the same consistent results in the field every time. We use technologies like nutrigenomics and other technologies, but nutrigenomics is one of the technologies we use uh, to help us develop new products and show how those products work. So for example, with nutrigenomics, we can measure the effect of certain nutrients on the genes of plants, I'm not talking about genetic modification. I'm talking about how nutrients can affect the expression of genes, whether good genes are upregulated or expressed, or whether the bad genes, or the genes we don't really want expressed, are suppressed. So we can use technologies like that to drive products and technologies that can improve soil health, that can improve plant health, and ultimately that can drive yield and improve yield. But it's not only about yield, it's also about the nutritional value of that crop. Um, things like energy, proteins, and digestibility, those are the top three. In fact, last night we had a bit of a crazy discussion dinner, um, and, but what came out of that was the fact that digestibility for many of the farmers in our room was absolutely king. There's a big drive on for digestibility, and that's what many of them are focusing on. That not only, though, do you have this nutritional value question, you also have the question of other quality parameters. What about things like mycotoxins? Can we actually prevent mycotoxins or uh, control some of the myco mycotoxins starting in the field? The quality and the nutritional value is what drives feed efficiency. And feed efficiency is what drives milk production. It's what drives daily live weight gain. It's what, drives, uh, it's what gives us safe food and food of high quality. All of that needs to be done sustainably. It needs to be done uh, with good traceability. And ultimately, if you do that properly, you will automatically have good profitability. So that's the end game. So this is really a chain, as Dr. Lyon said in the beginning, all the way from uh, your seed to your feed to fork, all the way through to future. And we really need to be looking at boosting that yield, getting the best out of the nutritional value of the crop getting the best feed efficiency we can, driving that milk and beef yield, and therefore driving efficiency and profitability. So here's a really interesting stat. It's one of my favorite stats you might have heard before. 
Uh, we've only ever identified 1% of all of the microbes in the soil. Only 1%. So the question is, what if we harnessed the other 99%? So there's 99% the world below our feet that we've never even seen, and we don't know uh, what there is there. What could we do with that? Well, this is one of the questions that we're actually tackling at our new um, research center in Ireland, at the Bioscience Center in Ireland, has only recently opened. Um, we, it's, it's a great facility, 50 hectares of trial plots, laboratories, brand new laboratories, PhD program, and we're looking at the question of soil health and wheat. And you know what? We've just had our first harvest, and it was pretty boring because we got a yield increase using soil set, the product that are, one of the products we've developed for soil health, um, of about almost a ton on the barley. So one ton more per hectare. I say boring because we have so many trials showing us the same thing. So the same thing over and over again. I got the results and I said, oh yeah, same thing again. So uh, first results off, it's quite exciting to get the first results, but um, I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff. And this product, remember, has a patent for, uh, for um, stress, for abiotic stress. What that means is it's patented for things like droughts, floods, frosts, um, salinity. Um, and this is a product that can help the, product, the, the plants cope with stressful conditions. One of the other products we're also looking at a lot at our facility there in Dunboyne is uh, Imprograin, or also called uh, Grain Set in other parts of the world. This is a blend of products that come from fermentation. Um, and we put this on plants when they're about, uh, sorry, about half a uh, liter to one liter per hectare when the plants are really young, in the early vegetative stages. So for example, on alfalfa, you put it on um, after each cutting, just as that regrowth is coming through. So about a week or so, just as the first leaves are coming through. We put it onto the small grains at late tillering stage or uh, early boot stage. And then on maize, we're putting it on at between the three and nine leaf stage. So it's about knee high. And what the product does is it boosts photosynthesis. It uh, boosts the, the metabolism of the plant and specifically photosynthesis. That photosynthesis increases the energy available to the plant because it's going to make the plant more, more efficient in converting the sun's energy into carbohydrates, sugars, and even other compounds such as proteins. Those compounds are then going to be used, first of all, on the plant, on the young plant, to increase root growth. So the first thing you're going to see is root growth. The second thing you're going to see is uh, growth of the stem and the leaves. And by that, what I mean is um, a, a stem and a leaf that is, more, that is less woody, more uh, soft, more digestible. So you're going to have improved digestibility there. You're also going to get some of that energy being pumped into the, uh, into the, 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 the growing, the, or the fruiting bodies of the plant, like the, uh, the corn uh, heads and the ears. And that's going to give you your increased yield. And ultimately, all of that energy is going to be going into the plant to give more protein, more starch, and better digestibility. So here's the first load to come off our, our farm there in Ireland. And again, a little bit boring because we got the same results as we've got in so many other places. Um, in this case, uh, 600 kilograms more per hectare on our barley. Uh, our typical range is anywhere between 600 and uh, uh, kilograms and one ton per hectare. So this is pretty standard, pretty normal for us. I just want to show you a few pictures, though, because um, it's late in the afternoon, and it's quite good to show you what I would expect to see and what I measure when I go out on farm, what I like to see when this product is used. So first of all, here's a trial that's just uh, finished. It's on winter wheat here in France in this very region. And uh, you can see there just two photos. The plants are a little bit taller, three centimeters or odd. Um, nicer roots, so those roots are going to be able to pull more uh, nutrients and more water out of, the, out of the ground. And what that's going to do is give more yield. So in this case, another 600 kilograms more, uh, 8%. And that's from this region right here. This big picture here is a great one because it's actually one of the farms that you would have either already visited or will visit on the farm tours, on this global dairy and beef farm tour. Uh, it's just east of Deville. 
and what you'll see there is on the right hand side the crop is uh, treated you can see it's higher about 30 centimeters higher it's greener and when you go into that crop you'll actually be, see that it's actually a lot thicker and more healthy so when you go onto that farm if you have the chance to do that please speak to the farmer and ask him some questions about it and you have lots of visual results but remember when you see a visual result there is actually quite a big uh, percentage difference in in the results that you're seeing there so here's Canada research farm where you can see on the left the crop that's untreated is a different in color it's thinner it's uh, slightly more yellow uh, the crop on the right is slightly greener more dense uh, a nice photo from England where you can see uh, on the left hand side the untreated right hand side treated and on the right hand side you can actually see that you have thicker crop, um, nice and green, and you can see that that crop is probably going to give you much better nutritional value. Uh, you're going to be able to harvest it earlier. You're going to be able to get a higher yield of that one. A photo taken about two, three weeks ago in Italy. Italians in the middle there. And you can see the spray marker where on the right of that spray marker it was treated. On the left it was untreated. And you can see the untreated there is about 30 centimeters lower, the treated higher, greener, thicker. And when you go into the crop, you can often see these results. So here's a photo from 2012 in Iowa. And you can see there when you go, actually go into the crop, on the right-hand side in the treated, you can see the stems are thicker, greener, slightly more, uh, less woody. You can see at the base of that stem, you've got really nice strut roots. Those roots are supporting the plant well. On the left-hand side where you've got the control or the, the end of, the, of the, the row that was sprayed, you can see that it's, uh, it's more woody, it's brown. Uh, that crop is going to yield less, and if you had to feed it to an animal, you're going to have less digestibility from that. One of the pictures, one of the things that Dr. Lyons likes to look at a lot, and we have hundreds of these pictures, are the roots. But the roots are really a great way to show the results from this. So if you are using the product, I do encourage you to just go out and pull some, pull some plants and check out the roots. This is from Italy last week, or no, sorry, about two, three weeks ago, I think. And there you can see again, the treated has a much more fibrous uh, root structure, bigger roots, more um, of the small roots and also the more structural roots. So for stability and also for pulling up some of those nutrients. And we have lots of the pictures, but I want to also show you, for, as in these ones here from the Midwest and the USA, the roots actually, you can, you can see a difference in the roots really quickly. So this is like um, 14 days, uh, 10 days, 14 days, 21 days after we've treated, you can already see the difference there. You can see both the um, primary roots and those little secondary root hairs that have developed quite nicely there. Another thing you can see uh, is the difference in the cobs as you get closer to, closer to harvest. So you can weigh them and you'll find that they're slightly heavier. You can measure them, they should be longer, they should have a bigger diameter. You can count the rows as you go around there and you should be able to see that there's, there's more rows as you go around. You can also see quite obvious on those that uh, you've got less uh, tipful uh, on the ones that have been treated, uh, also called a nose in Italy. So you've got less of a nose on the treated ones and, uh, and obviously the, the, the yield that you're going to get off that is much better. We've got a lot of trials showing yield results, but one of the most convincing and I think one of the most, uh, maybe one of the most appropriate ways of showing how this product works is using these yield monitors. And we have quite a few of these from the Midwest of the US where you have uh, the sprayed section um, showing a nicer, higher yield on that yield monitor. And specifically here, it's important that you calibrate that yield monitor so that it can pick up those small uh, differences in yield. But you can clearly see there where we've treated the two stripes down the middle of the field. OK, so I've spoken quite a lot about yield. And as I said in the very beginning, maybe we're chasing yield too much. So what about this nutritional value? When I talk about nutritional value or feeding value, I'm talking mostly about protein, energy, digestibility. The first um, major university trial that we would have done uh, would have been with Maloney in 2011. This guy comes from Wisconsin. He's a, he's a very recognized nutritionist uh, and, um, and agronomist from the Midwest of the USA. And he showed a he did two trials and showed on average a 5% increase in silage. 
a 1% increase in milk production for every ton of silage. So if you've got more silage, you've got more milk from every ton of silage, it means that you've actually got more milk for every acre, more milk for every hectare. And that's, uh, that, that was a, a big uh, uh, breakthrough for us when we started looking at how you can improve the milk production per hectare. So he repeated the trial again, twice, just to see how replicable this was. And the most recent results we have are, uh, show that we increased the yield by 2.6 uh, tons of silage per hectare. And no, it's not because of the picture. I chose a bad picture there. He is, he, he's not missing the trailer. There's a trailer on the other side. The milk yield per ton of silage was also increased. So not only did he have more silage, but the silage that he had actually produced more milk, so 88 kilograms more per ton. And if you take both of those together, you actually get more milk per uh, unit area, per acre or per hectare. And in this case, you can see about a 10% increase. Even more importantly, though, if you look at that figure there, 9,000 plus liters, that's one very high genetic merit dairy cow per hectare. That's a huge amount of milk. So it was a very successful trial. For the people from North America in the room, You'll also notice on the right-hand side there, he also did trials comparing it uh, to headline. Headline is a strobulerin uh, herbicide that is, uh, sorry, fungicide that is used uh, across the USA almost as a biostimulant to try and stimulate more yield. Um, and it's pretty well used as standard. But you can see there that when you combine the grain set with your headline, you actually get a double whammy. You're getting more yield uh, than just when you use the one. So there's a synergistic effect there as well. What about alfalfa? So we gave Dr. Maloney alfalfa to look at as well. He did randomized replicated trials, uh, 2013, and what he found was 11% more dry matter. He found 6% more crude protein. So more yield, better quality yield. In the US, they also have a, a, a standard called uh, relative forage quality, which is really measures your feeding value of that alfalfa, and you could see that there was a nice increase in the feeding value of that alfalfa. And when you put those figures into your milk software, what you can see is that they had a nice increase of about uh, 6% uh, in the milk production uh, per ton of haylage. So let's just look at a few other recent results. One week ago, we got these results from Turkey, from a university, and uh, there they saw more uh, crude protein, better digestibility. Um, but you need to reformulate the diet because dairy cows don't only eat alfalfa. <laughs> so if you take those, that alfalfa, that reformulated, or sorry, that, that uh, analysis, and you put it into software, uh, in this case, Plurimix is what we were using, um, you can see that you can actually get an, an extra 120 grams of crude protein out of the diet which is going to drive production of about 1.2 uh, liters of milk. Again, there's a university trial, this one, so great results. Spain, we've also just got results about three weeks ago. And the same thing again. We take the results, we put it into software, reformulate that diet using the new uh, uh, forage analysis, and what we see is 50 grams more crude protein, half a liter more milk. And again, one last one. This is from uh, June. It was the second cut in Italy uh, where the, where the Imprograin was applied eight days after the first cut. So just when that, those leaves are coming through. And uh, what we see there is an increase of 179 grams of crude protein in that diet, which is about 1.8 liters more milk. So the whole point really is that we have got increased yield, increased nutritional value, and, uh, and that's what we're looking for in driving that milk production. But what else? Well, a healthy crop does have fewer mycotoxins. Fusarium is something that you can control through management, but uh, also we do see that a healthy crop, a crop that uses our program, does have less fusarium, for example. So we do have great results with mycotoxins, uh, and this is a big area of focus for us over the next few years. Not only that, but a crop 
uh, with better nutritional value does make better silage, stands to reason. More sugar in that, more sugar, more starch in that uh, corn silage is going to ensile better. So David Davies, uh, a, a very respected uh, independent consultant from the, uh, from the UK, just sent us this data from about three weeks ago showing how when you treat a crop, you actually have better aerobic stability. So that crop does not heat up as quickly. In this case, the untreated crop heated up at about uh, 50 hours, sorry, about 70 hours, as opposed to the, the, the treated crop, which actually remains stable all the way through to about uh, 150 hours. So there's a difference in that. So the whole idea here, the whole premise that we're working on is taking this, uh, or looking at the farm all the way from the seed to the feed to the fork all the way through to the future, driving the, the, the yield and production, driving the energy, protein, digestibility, improving that feed efficiency, which will give us more milk, more beef, which gives us more, and that increased efficiency is what's going to give us, yeah, our sustainability, the traceability we need, but also, most importantly, that profitability. So thank you very much.